I don't know where my baby is and I may never see her again. A mother searching for her missing daughter. Now, nearly four years later, prosecutors have filed charges in the disappearance and murder of Kelly Dwyer. And they laid out their case against her boyfriend, Chris Zacco, saying he killed her during aggressive and violent sex. 12 News' Nick Bora joins us from Zacco's old apartment. That was the last place Dwyer was seen alive. Right, Toya. She was seen on video going into the apartment building here. Dwyer lived, or rather, Zacco lived up in the 18th floor there, but there is no video of her coming out. A 16 page complaint details his incre increasingly violent sexual behavior and how it could have led to her death and how he, quote, tried to get away with murder. We first learned Kelly Dwyer was missing in October of 2013 from her mom as she passed out missing posters in the Third Ward. This is the most awful, incredibly horrible thing anyone could ever go through. I don't know where my baby is. Dwyer's body wasn't found until May 2015 along a rural Jefferson County road. And now prosecutors say her boyfriend at the time, Chris Zacco, put her there. Police tracked down at least four of Zacco's former girlfriends who say he was increasingly aggressive and used restraints during sex, at times restricting their breathing. One of them saying Zacco, quote, seemed to enjoy overpowering her after she would signal for him to stop. Police also have a sex video from Zacco's phone showing Dwyer herself tied up, her breathing restricted just a month before her disappearance. Dwyer was last seen going into Zacco's apartment building, but investigators say there's no video of her coming back out. The criminal complaint details Zacco's travel golf bag large enough to hold her body was removed from his apartment and never found. The day after she disappeared, Zacco removed the SIM card from his phone for most of the day, meaning investigators could not trace his whereabouts. Prosecutors now believe that's when he was dumping Dwyer's body. In the complaint, prosecutors conclude, quote, Zacco kills Kelly Dwyer probably on his bed and probably as the result of an intentional sexually motivated homicidal act or during the course of an extremely reckless sexual asphyxia scenario taken too far. And because Dwyer's body was so badly decomposed, investigators were unable to determine exactly how she died. Toya? And Zacco is in prison, convicted in an entirely separate case, Nick. Right, Toy. He's serving 19 years in prison on a child pornography case. And we should mention that he has not confessed. There's no new statements from him in this criminal complaint. But coming up tonight on 12 News at 6 o'clock, there is some new information about what a police dog was able to find when it searched both his apartment and his car. Toya. All right, Nick, thank you. Within the hour, Milwaukee's police chief weighed in on the cold case. He says his officers worked very hard for several years to get to this day. A bit of a, a jigsaw puzzle, and there were a lot of uh, pieces that were always available to us. It was just uh, ultimately learning how each piece fit with the others. And I think there's an overwhelming amount of information in the complaint that uh, indicates essentially that we eliminated about every other conceivable suspect um, and uh, that this individual clearly uh, had the opportunity and uh, by all accounts the, uh, uh, you know, committed this, uh, this act. And as Nick reported, Zacco did not confess in this case. We spoke with a well-known local defense attorney about the challenge prosecutors could have proving their case in court. In terms of what actual evidence will get in front of a jury, I would say that that's going to be a pretty good fight and I would think a number of, a number of things listed I could be wrong, but I would think a number of these things listed uh, are not going to find their way in front of that jury panel, which arguably makes uh, already circumstantial case more suspect.